This week's parsha is parsha Peyete. Uh, this Torah is actually based on what I heard from Rabbi Robinson of Chicago at McCor. And let's go through with it. So just some background information. This is a, the, uh, the parsha where Yaakov goes to Lavan's house and marries Leah and then marries Rachel. Uh, so let's see what happens. So in chapter 29, verse 31, Hashem Akara. Hashem said that Leah wasn't loved, so he opened her womb, but Rachel remained barren. And then the next couple of psukim, Leah conceives, bears a healthy baby boy, Reuven, then she conceives again and bears another boy, Shimon, and then she conceives again and bears a third son, Levi. Now, the reasoning for Levi's name is what we're really going to be focusing on this week. We see that uh, according to Rashi in the Pasuk that discusses Levi is, why did a uh, why did Leah feel so uh, so fulfilled when she had her third son? Because Leah knew she was a prophetess, right? That there are going to be, I guess, two wives and two maidservants, right? Two shivchas that Yaakov was going to be with and and conceive children and have children with. So if there are four, and Leah knew that there are 12 tribes, then 12 divided by four is three. So there you go. She had her third son. She's now fulfilled her part, right? She's had the amount she's supposed to have. And therefore her response is, V'tahar od v'teled ben, Again she conceived and bore a son and said, This time my husband will become attached to me, for I have borne him three sons. Therefore he called his name Levi. And Hashem called his name Levi. Now, we need to focus on this on this terminology because there are a lot of uh, mitzvahs that deal with, I guess, the word Levi or Leviya or something of that sort. Like what? So a Leviya. Right? A funeral procession, right? Where we escort the dead to its final bur- burial place. Or Malava Malka, right? The Suda mitzvah that you have after Shabbat. Right? You have three Suda's, you have to, after three meals on Shabbat. Then after Shabbat is over, you have a fourth because you want to escort the Shabbat out, right? Like do do honor to Shabbat by, by escorting it out and in, into the rest of the week. And then uh, the third one is is Levi, right? To escort your your guests out of the home, right? You ha- you've had them over for, for a meal, probably a Suda. Or some other event. Now you want to make them feel, you want them to make them feel good. So you escort them out. And you make them, you make them feel that you know you'll honor them even then. Rabbi Robinson says that's an incorrect view of what the the mitzvahs of of Leviya, of Levi, of Malava Malka is. It's not because we're escorting them out, and we see that in this week's parsha. What does Levi mean? So let's see again. Fatar or Vatele ben. So and she, again she conceived and bore a son, and said. Vatomir, Ata, Hapam Yilave Ishi Elai. Right? This time, my husband will become attached to me. And if we look at the Targum, he says something very similar. So, so Hada, Zimna Yitchabarli. He will be like Chibor. There will be a connection here. So, what is it? This time, my husband will become attached to me. He'll be connected to me. The idea of, of these mitzvahs of Livui isn't that you should feel like you're escorting them out, it's a point of departure. That's wrong. So, so let's look at these mitzvahs, right? Levaya, what are we doing? So you think, you know, you're, you're escorting them to their final burial place. That's it. This is like the departure point. You're just taking leave of them. The answer is no. The, the point of Levaya is to feel connected to this dead person, right? You're like, look, even though right now you're buried, I'm sure you're in Olam Haba and I'm in Olam Haseh, right? So we're separated literally by worlds. We're worlds apart. Even so, the lessons I've learned from you are things that I'm going to take in, uh, with me for the rest of my life. And I want you to know that we're still connected. We're attached to each other, right? Mlava Maka. We think it's like, oh, it's, it's us escorting the Shabbat out, right? That's it. Shabbat, Shabbat was in, now it's out. We're having a, like a royal procession out, and that's it. The answer is no. The lessons we learned from this week's uh, Shabbat, like the, the menucha that we got, the clarity of vision that we got by, by observing Shabbat and enjoying it, right? We're like having a malava malka. We're still connected. We're like, we, we love Shabbat. We want to feel feel like we're attached to Shabbat. What about Levi? Again, I mean, there is a very nice idea of escorting, you know, a friend out after you've had them over for a meal. But the idea is that, like, the connection doesn't end here, right? That's it. We're, I'm escorting you out because the connection isn't over. We're still attached. We're still connected. And we're still friends or family, right? We still want, like, want to be together. So that this, that's what, what's going on when you when you do leave away and you uh, you walk your, your guests out. And we see that all from uh, from just this first mentioning of Levi and what, what his name was, uh, was based on. Shabbat Shalom.